Good evening, friends, and welcome once again to one of our Purple Mountain videos um, with the team here at the Purple Mountain. Uh, I'm, of course, me, Chris, and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Stephen. And we Hi. are really Hi. pleased to invite back uh, this evening for this live talk our friend from Canada, Maureen Cardoso, who's a spiritual healer and teacher. Uh, and this evening's talk will be the first on a series about spirit guides, inspirers, inspiration. So we will all be speaking our truths, our experience. Uh, this evening is open to questions. So as we go through the evening, if you have questions, if you have comments, please add them. I can see a few people have joined us already, Jenny, Ruth. So welcome all friends this evening. It's our pleasure to be with you and to share this knowledge and hopefully there'll be a lot of questions about spirit guides, inspirers and teachers. And before um, we move any further forward, I'm going to pass over to Maureen, who we're really grateful that she's um, freed her time this evening to be with us once again. Ah, oh, thank you so much and lovely to be back and just to say hello to everyone that is uh, on Facebook and I've been to the Purple Mountain Center a few times this past year and met uh, many of you and look forward to coming back at some point in time and uh, meeting more of you and continuing uh, what seems to be a growing rapport between uh, the Purple Mountain and myself and uh, yeah, look forward to what we will do together in future. So you ask us to speak about working with our guides and uh, yeah. dear friends in spirit. And yeah, I have had many beautiful experiences um, with uh, my own particular uh, really close guide, but then other teachers that are also around us. Um, and how I began with my development on um, becoming aware of our uh, particular guides and teachers that are around us is uh, sitting in circle uh, for in prayer and meditation for um, receiving the divine love. And that brings its own particular set of guides and teachers. Uh, they refer to themselves as celestial angels. They once walked on earth and had earthly experience, but through them receiving uh, and praying for the divine love upon their soul, there's a whole transformation that happened. And so as they continued on in spirit, um, they then found themselves in the celestial realms uh, as a divine being uh, opposed to a human being. So we all have uh, that opportunity and uh, sort of like a Absolutely. liberation, right? So yeah. um, because we in our, I say we in our group and in, in uh, our divine love community, um, sit for a singleness of purpose of, of receiving this divine essence in the soul. It attracts a particular band of, of um, teachers. Mm -hmm. So depending on your own gifts that you have, what is your nature, what is your own spiritual work, you are given a guide that is compatible to that. So um, my gifts, tend to be most dominant in the healing arts. And I have a very beautiful and graceful, delicate um, spirit guide uh, by the name of Lotus Blossom. And um, she has become very close to me, a really deep rapport, helping me with the development of my own uh, spiritual gift, particularly of healing. And I've just watched this blossom, especially since our uh, time in isolation with COVID. You know, we've been given a lot of free time to use. And so depending how um, we've been using that, you know, we'll have an implication on what can open. So I've sat a lot of time. I'm just drawn to sit in, in this energy in this meditative space. Usually for me, I sit a couple 
uh, one hour sessions a day. It's just because it you just kind of want to go back into that energy, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it draws them, they work upon you, and then your own gift gets to be utilized. And so I've really seen um, this particular spirit guide uh, come very close to me and um, work upon me and work with me uh, also in in the healing that I do and a lot of um, it, the healing is now changed to more sort of remote spiritual healing so person is at their house I'm at my place and it unfolds in that way a whole realm um, and she you know she teaches me things in in um, sleep state um, and I just feel her essence very closely. Uh, so she's one guide that I feel really um, close with. Another particular guide um, that I notice that works with me is her name is Kia Adakam. And she has a very teaching nature. So uh, I, I would say I feel her with me now <laughs> because she <laughs> wants to help me to be able to articulate things uh, smoothly and well and translate so people can hear you know we have these spiritual experiences but they need to be translated into you know an everyday expression so she's a, a really um, powerful teacher I remember one time in circle she we ourselves as a group had been talking about various sciences that people were um, involved in. And she came through um, our dear friend, Al, who is a trans medium. And she was, you know, she, they always say, refer to something that we've been talking about. And so she was um, pointing out these sciences. And so she said, what about being a scientist of the soul? And oh, for me, that just, it just was like, yes, I am a scientist of the soul. I, was, <laughs> I love that one. And I just went with that. So, because I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not a scientist by, you know, studying the sciences, uh, but now I am. <laughs> like, I, I now fit into the, to the realm of the science um, world. So she's a very beautiful and uh, she brings she a lot of healing essence with her as well. But a lot of light uh, is what she brings forward when she's doing um, healing. And an another really powerful spirit that I, I want to share about that works um, with me at various times because they come and go depending what it is that we're moving through. Uh, his name is Soretta Kemp. And he is uh, another healer, but he also helps in circle uh, when people sit together, blending the chemicals of, um, of one another. So there's this compatibility so we can help sort of by osmosis of those that are sitting in circle also with their spiritual development. But he comes from time to time and I felt him very closely with me uh, recently and so uh, I've shared this uh, with you before, but uh, I think it's valid to help us understand the work that we are doing together, um, uh, sort of by spirit's guidance, is in meditation. I all of a sudden found myself sitting in the Purple Mountain, and this dear guide, Soretta Kem, was with me, and he brought me very close to the, uh, I could there was an awareness of your um, your rose warts, quartz wall that you have there. And I know, I remember when I had a first visit, that was the thing that I noticed. I was just, oh, I was so drawn to that and I would feel it and I just said, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. So that was really um, noticeable there. But also too, what he brought to my attention sort of the help that he's also bringing your center is uh, for increasing the structure and the energy flows of what you refer to as the, your beacon of light. And in our language, we call it a portal of light, right? So, yeah. and we're taught through them that when there is this portal of light there, 
what it does is it has its own flow of healing energies and properties that flow through it. So it makes it, um, it, it just adds its own quality uh, to a center that is really working for the good of, of mankind. They want to be able to come and, and help all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was really, I was surprised that I was there sitting, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, well, we're really assisting something. And then two days later, he had me back there and he inspired me with the idea of doing a workshop as a fundraiser to help complete the rose quartz uh, wall. So for me, anytime I receive these kind of things in meditation and, and I, I feel just very inspired and resonating um, with that. So I've approached you guys. And so, so we're going to do it, right? Uh, so I would <laughs> love to offer that, um, that workshop. Uh, hopefully there will be people on your side that would love to attend. And Absolutely. any funds raised then would be uh, supportive and given to the completion of the wall. But one thing I ask, well, let's say we hope maybe the wall gets completed, but leave one little spot so I can, next time I'm there, I can place <laughs> My we'll do own. that for you. We'll do yeah. that. We will do for you. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll place the picture on Facebook so everybody oh, can uh, enjoy yeah. that moment. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Hopefully so sooner than later. I, I just yeah. wanted to pick up on a couple of points there, really important points. First of all, um, about the current situation, we've found ourselves in this time of, of what a wonderful and positive way to use it to sit with spirit to meditate, to blend with our guides. We're, in many ways, we can see things one way or another, but what a positive way to see uh, is that time, is a wonderful time to stop and reflect and connect with those around us. Um, but with mentioning about the Purple Mountain, it's something that Stephen uses a lot at the moment, which is synchronicity, which seems to be happening left, right and centre everywhere around us at the moment. <laughs> but I, I felt that was a really um, something that uh, is good to share with everybody, having that time to connect with those around us in the spirit world. Yeah. But if I could, yeah. Maureen, could I just ask you uh, for your sort of first memory of having a connection with a guide or teacher? Oh, wow. Our first experience. Hmm. Well, I've always felt like I was one foot or one foot on earth and, and one foot up top. Um, yeah. I think, you know, when I really began to feel somebody in spirit guiding me was actually when my grandmother passed because I was really familiar to her energy um, on earth. And I really loved her and had a beautiful rapport with her. So I feel that when, because I could recognize her and knew what her essence was, that was really my first uh, experience that I can recall tangibly that yeah. spirit was was with me. I, I, I've i never doubted that there is spirit and that we can move forward um, in, in spirit form. But that would have been, I guess, my sort of first realization of it. But then when I began with this um, meditation for divine love, that really began to open in a new way. Um, so it's not like I've walked all my life. Uh, I know I've been guided, I've, but there's not necessarily all my life been this awareness of spirit name. What are their qualities that they do when I'm going through yeah. this in my life? They do that. But now, um, I think because my spiritual journey is is very rooted in what I'm doing, I know that I'm going to continue on this particular pathway that they uh, then become very close and they can, we've built a beautiful soul to soul rapport. It's, uh, it's incredible. So 
yeah does that answer your question <laughs> yeah that's absolutely i think that's, that's wonderful and and just um you sort of thoughts on it i know you mentioned a lot of your healing guides and such and mm -hmm. how do you feel that's influenced or enhanced your journey what do you feel uh, that knowing is brought? yeah it's 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 brought a level of understanding what is my purpose here i yeah, feel absolutely. very in my own skin with doing this kind of work and very purposeful because incredible things are are flowing and unfolding and you know my first doorway into healing i became um aware of reiki and so i took some reiki training long time ago but at that time it was kind of felt like cult-like you know it's like oh what are you talking about reiki it's like people weren't aware of it right <laughs> yeah. so this would have been like 25 years ago kind of a thing and so i sort of left it but then it it uh, then I became into the teachings of what is divine love very shortly after. But eventually Reiki found its way back into my life. And what I realize now is because it, it gave me an avenue for the healing to uh, move through. And so I, the energy, it's a beautiful energy to be opened and be that conduit or channel for, um, for that healing energy, that flow and i loved it so much that i i became a teacher of reiki yeah. so you know then as as i kind of continued on and my own gift of healing developed and i knew i could always feel spirit with me but as i continued to open and develop then i really felt them close and there and them showing me things and, and guiding me um, in in the healing gift. So um, I would say it's more a, the prominent gift for me. I do have the gift of trans mediumship and um, I I think the two can serve each other because I can, you know, hear spirit. I can um, also be of service through um uh, mediumship in you know they they love to guide us and teach us on our journey um these particular teachers the celestial teachers they're all about the soul they're you know they want us to take care of our physical body and to discipline the mind but they know there's many ways to do that but they're are is very limited uh i guess teachings or avenues of teachings that is specific for the soul and that is what this essence of love does is it awakens the soul um in in profound ways does the healing and the awakening um so there's a real uniqueness to that and um yeah so yeah I think that's the, it's a lovely way to uh, express um, your experiences there. And I feel an important part of what you mentioned, um, purpose. Mm -hmm. Because many of us on this earth plane is seeking our spiritual purpose. Mm -hmm. And many a time we hear in, in our, um, on our journey, myself and Stephen have heard those words that a, a guide will um, show us where to go, but not always what to see. Mm, mm, beautiful and i feel we're all seeking that purpose so yeah. thank you very much for for sharing sharing yeah. that morning yeah, i'm welcome. sure many people can take inspiration mm. i'm just going to move over to our colleague stephen <laughs> and um uh, ju just to say keep your questions coming everyone i can see sylvia's got a question on and we will get to them very shortly so we're going to go through and good evening to everybody that's joining us and I'm going to go over to Stephen now and just your thoughts on guides and inspirers and perhaps your first experience of a specific guide on your work. Yeah, sure. I just want to like that. Thank you, Maureen. You know, I think it's absolutely great when you, when we all share personal experiences because they hopefully will inspire other people uh, to, to, to walk that spiritual road. But I'd like just to make a couple of points. Um, what Maureen said with with connecting 
with your soul and i think we we starting with a new era of teachings with with this with for, for humanity you know the the time of the guru the time of telling what you should and shouldn't do go to a medium go to here this is what you should and shouldn't do yeah. a lot of that's changing now and trying to empower people to look within their soul and and if anybody wants to learn about connecting with guides or inspirers or teachers or helpers i mean we we put them all in categories but in it yeah. um, i remember little raven who who works with us at the purple mountain he says we are or no matter if you call a psychic a medium or a trans medium a, 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 a healer we're all healers that's that's our work we're all doing healing work that's very very simple so if anybody wants to connect with guides connect with your soul first connect, <laughs> yeah, you know, connect with you because because we have this expectation and you, i see so many people that get so frustrated and say i'm connect trying to connect with this guide and i want to connect and a lot of people don't even know who they are and i think that's so important if anybody wants to learn about meditating in terms of connecting with god well connect with your spirit because mm -hmm. you know talking about the collective consciousness you know my light now is connected to chris's light and maureen's light we're all connected as part of that larger matrix or the spider's web so if you want to connect with the guide why well, connect with your light and your love and that would in turn connect with with loved ones and and guides and inspirers and i'd like to also mention as well that that uh guides a lot of people have said to me well why don't i feel my guide by my side why why do i not feel spirit there well spirit are there everybody on this on this beautiful planet this beautiful earth everybody have got ancestors guides and healers around us it's unfortunate we create these blocks we create we uh, maureen we talk about the heart center and divine love we we create these fragmentations these distortions that create these boundaries that these they, they create these walls between us and spirit things like fear and expectation and that's why it's so important to work on yourself in terms of of light and healing and love so that those walls that we we build will be washed away these distortions these illusions will be washed away and people i mean it was interesting what you said and, and i've experienced the same oh wow i feel this guide now and this and my guide says i've always been there Stephen. it's just <laughs> you didn't accept the love and the light i've always been there since you were born yeah, so yeah. i'm saying to everybody you know you don't have to you know we, we we seek teachers and i think i would say i'm i'm a sort of a teacher because you know in the work that i do but as a role as a teacher we're empowering people to search their own truth their own power because you are as powerful as as everybody else if that makes sense to to everybody mm -hmm. and i like to mention as well that spirit healers in a way we're talking about our own gifts and i think i i know as my spiritual truth i've come back to the earth to do healing work and and, and you have as well maureen and i know you have chris and we call ourselves light workers and that's our work so we're very lucky because we've got our own gift we've got a gift like a flower that opens up so healers and teachers can't enhance our gift what they can do is empower us and inspire us to seek our own truth and our own power because in a way spirit can't give us the gift the gifts we, we've taken this gift in this life mm. and again those blocks those distortions within us masks our beautiful spiritual light fear the ego they they shackle they hinder our spiritual life from we, i mean you were talking before maureen about connect you know connecting 
Mm. And that's what we're all seeking, aren't we? We all want to connect with spirit, with guides and inspirers. But again, I'm going to revert it back. Connect with your spirit. And as you connect with yourself, you can then connect with loved ones, mm. if that makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. And just another point there as well uh, is about what Maureen was saying about the Purple Mountain and the important, I call it energetic work. You know, we've got a physical work that we do there, you know, healing and readings, and that's equally important. But on the energetic sense, with what's going on on the earth today, it's so important that the density and the heaviness of these fragmentations of the earth have distorted and there's so much anger in the world and there's so much hurt and pain in the world and it's down to light workers it's down to spiritual centers to be the beacon of light portals you know we all speak in the same truth but using different words to in our understanding so our job is to lift the vibrations of the earth so that guides and inspires can i mean i'm talking about very highly enlightened beings here friends from other worlds they want to connect with us but we we are we can't listen to them because it's so heavy on the earth the the distortions of the earth they can connect to different places like our circles where we are a community and we lift the vibrations even at the center we're a beacon of light they can reach to us there but your guides your inspirers the masters the angels whatever you want to call them they have been trying to talk to humanity it's just that we've not been listening because it's been so loud mm -hmm. and and part of i think we were talking about this before part of your work more in not any in not in not in an egotistical way you've you've come to us to enhance that healing energy so that somebody like cyrus and i and i quite openly talk about him now that has been away the past seven thousand years in and other planets and he's drawing back to the earth plane because of this big awakening so his knowledge his his, his truth needs to be heard and in order for him to be heard it's down to i call us architects spiritual architects to build the foundations so that people can begin their awakening because in the in the road that humanity is going at the moment we are destroying the world that's without doubt and it's down to people anybody that's listening now people like us that are light workers it's down to us to work on ourselves connect with ourselves send out the light and love and lift the vibrations of the earth so i just wanted to make that point so i'm going to very quickly talk about my experience <laughs> <laughs> so, You're on a roll. Keep going. Keep yeah. going. so um, my personal experience i i I've, i want to say to everybody i'm i always tried to pinch myself because I always try to keep myself humble mm -hmm. and respectful at all times because there is this thing called the ego that I see within the spiritual movement that unfortunately taints and fragments the, sp the spiritual mind, the, the, the heart, the spiritual heart. So it's so, so important to keep yourself humble and surround yourself with other light workers, surround yourself with like-minded people that keep you grounded, I think that is really important for me anyway on, on a personal note but i'm very very lucky I, I, maybe spirit don't want me to say i'm very lucky because i'm on the path that i've chosen remember i've chosen this path of you know which which i'm very very lucky with but my works fundamentally changed and i just want to go back to when i started about 15 years ago and when i joined a home circle i felt like I came home it was it was wow it was this is it this is the truth and and if anybody is looking for that a lot of people have said when they've come to the purple mountain or, or they come to other places think wow i've come home this is the place because there is no ego there it's the truth and when the truth speaks 
everybody listens and you can't question that truth because it's a spiritual truth because it's with it's a language within our dna it's within our spiritual dna and no matter how much you try to question that truth you can't because the truth is the truth it's the divine truth if that makes sense the unconditional love if you teach anybody or tell anybody about unconditional love nobody can argue about that because it's the truth it's a divine code mm. unconditional love so i started off 15 years ago and and i and i actually sat within a home circle and i, and I chris i had no ambition i was quite happy to come every week just to sit and i was i was i was so amazed by uh, there was a lady called anita williams uh, sh and i want to say uh, she was my first guru she was my first inspirational um medium that inspired me in in opening because she she didn't oh sh she guided me to see the gifts within me she created that home circle for me to sit it was a trusted sacred space where you were not judged i think that's so important to find that place where you're not judged you can be who you are from any form of background you could just sit in the energy of peace but i was very lucky because spirit she gave me my one true spirit guide which we'll probably go through in other talks or maybe even tonight you know your one true guide stays with you from birth to the moment you go back to the spirit world that one people call them guardian angels so so in a way i'm not the i'm only speaking my truth but in, in essence we all use different languages but we all speak in the same truth if that makes sense you call them guardian angels guides doorkeepers wh whatever you want to call them so and i was told that my spirit guide was called chi chang li it was a chinese gentleman and he's he he elected uh to to walk with me in my earthly life my earthly life so how that came about was that in my when i make when we all make plans before our reincarnation we would be in the spirit world and we'll say right stephen are you ready to come back to the earth you know what have you got to learn and my big thing is judgment you know i sometimes in my personality think you know things are very black and white why can't they just do that and and it's you no know, so that's a, in a way when i formulate that's a judgment so i've come to learn that and we you know and don't anybody look at us that we're perfect nobody's perfect we've all got uh, massive of course patience. i am i am perfect yeah. <laughs> so what was interesting with you maureen earlier on when you were talking about compatibility mm. and i think your spirit guide um has to be compatible because it, uh, spirit has said they are your best friend mm. and your best friend has unconditional love so whatever you do whatever you say whatever you act in your life they will never judge you they will love you no matter what so don't ever feel oh i'm disappointing spirit or what is my guide saying to me or what's my angel they will love you no matter what mm -hmm. now spirit walk your guide will walk by your side they're not in front of you or behind you they will walk by your side as an equal entity of energy so they, they will not guide you to where you need to be they will walk by your side to assist you to inspire you to empower you in your earthly matters because and i think that's even more important as light workers more important when you work with spirit because there will be healing guides there will be uh, inspirers there will be you know i work mediumistically i have uh, three or four clairvoyant guides that work with me and then i do my trance work and i've got my healing guides there so i could talk about three <laughs> hours about all my personal experiences but i i very very rarely talk about my one true spirit guide and i and i think your one true guide is if anybody wants to connect with a a, a guide or inspire us begin by connecting with your one true spirit guide mm. and when you do it's an absolutely amazing experience because there's no greater love than unconditional love that they have for you and and you say well how can i how can i connect with my guide meditation work on yourself connect with your soul connect with your light connect with your light 
connect with your heart and that will bring a connection between you and you one true spirit guide a lot of people say well you know it's very controversial topic really about one true guides because a lot of people say well it's not important to know names well we are a spirit in a physical body in a part of ourselves if you like it or not we've got an ego side hmm. and that ego side for me says i want to know who that person is and, and and in a way to know that person's name in my personal opinion creates a stronger bond hmm. it, it creates a stronger connection between you and that spirit guide or that inspirer and it builds a, a stronger relationship and remember we work with spirit we don't work for spirit we work with spirit we're not servants to spirit because we are spirit as well we are as equal to spirit it's just the fact that we've we we are with the strong ones we've got we are the courageous ones we've come back to the earth to do this 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 healing work or this teacher work or this mediumistic work so chi chang lee was the first spirit guide that i connected with and and i was so fascinated with and, and i was just so passionate and i'm still very passionate as well but in more recent events uh, i work with somebody called albert einstein um he drew close to our circle 2012 a year after anita passed so the dynamics of the circle changed and i was only um um uh, a trainee trans medium if i want to call that i was only developing and i was really i just i really had to i was thrown in the deep end anyway and that's what i needed and i worked then deeper and deeper and deeper and, and he still works with us albert and and he without his teachings we wouldn't be where we are today uh, he might disagree with that because he always says that he sees greatness in us that we don't see in ourselves mm -hmm. and really in a way chris was making a point spirit don't teach us nothing they just guide us to the teachings that are already within us they just pull come on maureen you've got the light mm -hmm. and, and they're empowering us they're mm -hmm. empowering us look at the power and the love and the energy and the teachings that are within us and to believe in them as well which which i think is is important and there was another a guide that works with me called little raven i don't know if you you you've heard him speak before he's a a native american indian healer and he was during the american wars he him and his a lot of his tribe was wiped out and he was a healer in his tribe but then with he got very angry he spoke very openly about it with the white man and and he was very angry about it and he 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 um continued the wars with with his tribe against the white man and 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 he lost a lot of his spirituality and, and he went for a pretty dark place so when he was killed he didn't really go to the light he was in that own illusion of that pain and that trauma and he said he, he talks about it very openly how horrendous it was how we couldn't let go of that fear so when we talk about guides they've all got a story mm. they've all lived those lives before so and, and that's what people say oh wow i'm speaking to spirit well speak to spirit like you're speaking to us because they are real they are real yeah. entities of energies they've lived and died like us mm. and um and then he met up with somebody called bill somebody called bill who actually was the soldier that killed him and and that's how he helped they helped each other and they're be very best friends now in the spirit world and, and that's how he's learned and the other spirit that works uh very closely with me not as often is uh, uh Pekaius. Mm -hmm. and he's he was an egyptian during alexander the great i think about 100 years after where it was the greek uh or the macedonian who controlled uh, the egyptian empire at that time and he was a scholar a philosopher a teacher during that time some of the big libraries there in 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 alexandra and he 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 drew he's drawn close to us and he he teaches us and guides us and stuff like that and then there is somebody really strong called uh you know sue mm -hmm. there is a lot of the healing work you know our sister sue chinese lady and she worked if anybody knows the history the da ming palace which apparently was one of the most beautiful palaces in the chinese era thousands of years ago and she was a healer then 
who worked for the emperor and empress's family and she now inspires us with a lot of the herbal medicines and stuff like that and and there's another guy called cyrus he mm. works he wants to connect with me but i'm i'm still trying to work on myself because i feel like unworthy why would this highly enlightened spirit want to work with me so i feel this i need to work on myself a little bit more so that he can connect with me stronger so i'm going to stop waffling now chris it's all yours <laughs> what about <laughs> your story <laughs> Well, I wanted to pick up on a few points there. That was very good, Stephen. Um, sort of going back on my journey, it's interesting what you said about, um, I do feel on our path we meet certain gurus, if we want to call them that. And I remember an early experience that I, I had before I got into the spiritual movement and I was going through quite a difficult period in my life. And it's the one and only time in my adult life that I've been to see a counsellor and it was decided that I should go and have a bit of a chat and and I was a bit of a I was struggling and it was such an unusual experience and it really turned me around and I remember sat with this gentleman uh, and he, he sort of talked me through what what do you like to do in your week uh, what do you do with your time uh, very gently asked me questions and then made suggestions. But at the end of it, he, he kind of made a very frank statement to me, but it wasn't offensive. And, and I was at a time when I was being very defensive as well, but I didn't take it. I seemed to just absorb what he said. And I remember him saying to me, you know, you have a lot more potential in you that you don't see. And he said a lot more than that. And... Uh, and, and very much pointed out to me that I was very lost and I had so much within me that to give and to enjoy. And I always look back at that moment that whether it was spirit, his spirit, my spirit that went there, that it was all sort of divinely guided together as this huge wake up call. And that was a big turning point in my life. Um, so that was a big inspiration to me. And when we talk about our guides and inspirers, I go back to what Maureen and Stephen mentioned about circle and circle work is so vitally important. Mm. And I know Maureen's continuing a lot of circle work at the moment uh, via Zoom and such around the world. And I think that's just wonderful. And one of the positives of technology and bringing that light and connection in that is very much needed in a time when a lot of people feel very isolated. And this is why we always say you are never on your own. And what mm. Stephen said, uh, we look for these guides. Well, uh, my guide, I found my guide when I was uh, 30. And really, they've been there all along. <laughs> and, and I feel sometimes with our guides, it's a little bit like this. We climb a huge mountain or overcome something. And we're almost exhausted and, oh, I feel great. I've overcome that challenge. And it's like the waiting at the top of this mountain saying, yeah, I knew you could do it all along. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I knew you had it in yeah. you. We were, we were just waiting for you. And I've had a lot of experiences recently through uh, the uh, plant medicines and, and ceremonies, healing ceremonies, where I've experienced a lot of guides, teachers, uh, friends, uh, ancient ancestors in the spirit world that have presented themselves to me. So we've always been here. Mm -hmm. It's just you've had a bit of a block or something emotional has been going on with you you've not been able to connect with us as deeply as you could but just going back to i feel a fundamental part within sit within a circle of light is sitting within that energy and that calm and peace and we begin to find ourselves mm -hmm. our true purpose who we really are heal our wounds calm our minds how many times i have said this before do we sit in silence and just observe ourselves, observe our breath and how we're feeling, our emotions? And once we start to calm and take ourselves in that space, we remove that block and that wall from all these beautiful spirits that are around us mm -hmm. that have always been there with that word unconditional love. And I, I was very fortunate uh, with Anita, the same as Stephen. She passed forward uh, my spirit guide to me and her names allow me and she's Indian and uh, quite often she would dance 
uh, and many in the circle would pick up this visualization of her dancing but she would always dance when i'm a bit troubled or <laughs> something's troubling in my mind and it's almost this calming dance this sway to, to settle me down um but that was my first experience um certainly with a guide within circle and i and 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 another uh, one of many good points that were made this evening so far is we tend to put ourselves here and spirit or our guides there and i do feel we are coming to a turning point that so many of these enlightened beings in the spirit world want us to know it's more like that that we are equal to their light and we have such a problem with understanding that and this unworthiness comes in and 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 they don't see it that way mm. and i feel that's possibly a big obstacle as we walk our walk the earth plane uh, to understand that that light vibrates to ours it's unconditional it's comes with zero judgment whatsoever i know that i picked up my guide around me um another perception i feel um that's quite common that i hear all the time is oh, i'm having a terrible day so my guide don't want to be around me they've done they've done a runner down the road <laughs> they've run away and actually it's in the hardest times that your guide will be at the closest to you they will be right there and how fast can they be there or well, how fast is a thought like that yeah that's how quickly they can be there but i feel um as well as that i just want to add in terms of people on the earth plane that have inspired us and this seems to be really relevant at the purple mountain because we've met so many people on our path including maureen and i can mention rick i can mention lewis i can mention anita i, I could mention a lot of people and um, but what i also want to acknowledge is i'm grateful for the people in my life that have been quite difficult Mm. because those difficult experiences have helped me to become a better person mm -hmm. and heal distortions within myself so i'm grateful that i encountered them yeah so they have taught me just as much as somebody who is inspirational mm -hmm. if that makes sense beautiful can so, i just uh, yeah can certainly just say chris on uh, just referring to how you had uh, mentioned about the guru the word guru right so yeah. it's interesting because guru can be that physical person but the word gu the gu means darkness and the ru means light so anything that takes us from darkness to light from aware unaware to aware is considered guru so you can hear inspirational song you can hear it from another person you can you know have something come into you so many things uh you know have that quality of guru <laughs> in it so, absolutely i think that was a, yeah. a beautiful piece of information <laughs> i didn't know that that's wonderful that's, that's my yogic teachings right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Yes, so, so I just feel there's been some lovely knowledge shared so far. So hopefully, friends, you're enjoying this. But I wanted to go back because we had a question earlier, and it was actually for Maureen. And it was from a lady called Sylvia O'Neill. And she asks, hi, Maureen, could you explain to a beginner how to do a meditation? Example, do you ask or do you? Do you ask for anything specific or do you just sit in the silence? How do you do your meditations? Wow. Thank you for the question. Very profound, very beautiful, uh, because for me, it's the it's the crux of uh, knowing exactly how. So the meditation that is is specific for the receiving of divine love into the essence of our own soul requires our heart requires our soul a deep longing a trueness and it's just really can be um this invoking of asking the creator god great white spirit whatever it is that you relate to to receive that inflowing of the divine essence 
So for me, for the way that we sit in circle, it is exactly about that. We can quietly do it. It doesn't have to be something verbal, but we just do a heartfelt, soul felt expression of bless me. You know, I desire to receive that touch, your, you know, kiss, your breath of life. And then we sit very quietly, but with a hope and an open heart space and openness. So do your best to come out of the mind. So I always say, let your mind sit upon your heart, right? Continue to bring your attention into the heart center. And as you, you um, feel this opening, it may take a while for you to feel this in flowing, but for me, the experience of receiving that, it's there's a warmth to it. It can be sort of this kind of pressure on the chest. You can feel a beautiful essence around you. You know, maybe the, um, the vibration changes in the room. You could feel in flowing coming into your head and you sit then in the silence. So I refer it to it as a prayerful meditation. The prayerful part is me invoking that, right? Because it requires an intention. Then, you know, the design happens. Uh, there's a response always to heartfelt prayer and longing. And the meditation is sitting um, and receiving. So there's an asking and there's a receiving in it. So that is my my pillar practice. That and it's yeah. for me it's it's uh it's life changing, soulfully changing, transformational, shall we say. <laughs> Thank you for the question and giving me the opportunity to uh, express more. Yeah, I thought that was a wonderful answer. And um, what stood out to me there is that power of intention mm. and, and almost by prayer setting our intention. And uh, one of our teachers, spirit teachers that Stephen mentioned, Little Raven, he once said, a meditation is very simply to sit within the silence. Mm -hmm. So we complicate things sometimes and say, should we have a certain pulse? Should I be this? Should I be that? Should I be asking? Should I? Just sit within the silence, mm -hmm. sit within that energy, say a prayer and and, and send that love out and it will it will be received back. Mm -hmm. I, like to mention, I like to mention yes, as well um, that once anybody begins really truly connecting in, in meditation, when when you go to that deep level and that transforming uh, you know, transforming yourself, that rebirth, isn't it? It's, it is being reborn from your old self to you to your authentic self when your true self you know these layers we build these masks that we, we build and then when we sit in silence that um it, it you create a longing so i mean you can relate to this can't you more with your meditations as your spirit will say you need to meditate and and you and you think oh yeah i can't wait to sit in that light and that yeah. love there. <laughs> It, it, it's like a magnetic pull once you you would i don't like using the word master meditation once you master yourself mm -hmm. because again you're going back to self-development personal development or spiritual development you create those walls and i think one of those is expectations we always expect something in a meditation so when you set your intention just sit in peace love and harmony don't expect nothing just sit and you'll be given what you need because mm -hmm. your, your spirit speaks your, your spirit your soul speaks it's just that we don't listen we don't our physical doesn't always listen we yeah. complicate things so it's about harmonizing and rebalancing energizing our mind body and spirit connecting and yeah when one thing too that I've noticed from doing this practice, I mean, I've been over 20 years doing it, but really intensely for maybe the past seven. And that's when many doors opened and uh, being lucky enough to go around the world and uh, facilitate what are circles of light. But as I um, 
my own practice uh, has continued to grow, there then becomes a desire of the soul that yeah. you just want to be back into that. Like, you know, <laughs> maybe I have a break in between a, a client, you know, my practice is from home. And so I say, oh, okay, what can I do? I could always do some housework. But then it's like, oh, wait, no, I can sit for 10 minutes, right? And, yeah. and be in that, in that light. And it, I mean, if I can mention too, anyone who's interested to experience um, a circle of light where we sit specifically for the divine essence is welcome to be in touch with me. Um, I uh, facilitate now the first Sunday of every month and we do it via Zoom and Chris and Steven joined us last week or week before. The week and before, yeah. Week before, it's really yeah. enjoyable. I highly yeah. recommend it. And then there's there's weekly ones. There's many. So Al and Jean facilitate. Uh, Jimbo also facilitates. So if anyone would be interested to uh, to join any of the online circles of light, um, you can. Yeah. Be, how do I let people be in touch with me? Do you guys? Uh, you'd be able to post the link on the comment section. Okay. Okay. And perfect. then um, or any information, and then they'd be able to follow it from there. Oh, okay. we could. Uh, okay. Uh, we, yeah, we can post it again. Uh, if anybody's interested, or uh, you can let us know, or we'll, we'll post a link as well. But yeah. uh, a wonderful experience, absolutely, and a very welcoming group is what we experienced as well. Oh, you must have hit it on a good day then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just enjoyed everybody saying our names in all the different accents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's international, that. right? The group is international. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. fantastic. Okay. So we're going to move on to another question, and um, that I will, I'll come to Stephen first with this one, if that's okay. Is it Joanna Cox's from... question? Pardon? Is it Joanna Cox's question? And uh, now this is uh, Marie Marsden. Uh, so I want to say hello to Marie, and her question is. I once asked for a name of my guide and I was told that names are not important to them. They are all a vibration. They give us a name and that is, uh, it's how we need, uh, we need to understand it in our earthly brain basically so that we are connected. So what- Yeah, yeah, yeah. just- uh, very, very, asking, very, Yeah, Marie, uh, very, very simple. I mean, to a degree, when you speak to a very, very enlightened spirit, to ask for the name is almost not insulting because they don't get insulted because they just got unconditional love. They're not bothered. They're not bothered what you call them. I mean, I think for us as earthly, as spirit in a physical body on an earthly vibration, we require names. And I think names are important to a degree for our physical brain, for our egos so that we can create that physical bond. I, I personally, as part of trust, because you know, we've not even talked about that, there's light and dark, there's there's lower spirits, there's very highly enlightened spirits. So I like to know what side I'm working on, personally. <laughs> um, so I, I like to know who I'm connecting with. You know, that that's on a personal point, point of view. Uh, I'm not saying that's the truth, that's my own truth, that's my own personal view. So, uh, so names for me are important i mean i wouldn't like to when when you when you're a working medium and when you're on the platform or you're giving messages and you're giving a message to a loved one in the audience in the congregation or or, or the client if it's a one-to-one -one reading and i and i described your mum or your dad if marie your parents or the spirit as a vibration i don't think they'll be very happy to be honest because they will say well, I'm just making this up, by the way. Just, just say your, your dad's called Bill. So my name's Bill, and I want to connect with my daughter. That is my name. That's who I am. Spirit. Some people have got this misconception that spirits sit on a fluffy cloud, and and they're all playing the harp, and the, and this and in the in the big river of Babylon, and everything's all love and light. There's different vibrations in the spirit. Sounds world. quite good, actually. <laughs> There's different <laughs> vibrations in the spirit world with different i don't like calling them levels the foundations different vibrations yeah. of light so as you go up the lighter it, it is you know yeah so that is i hope i've 
I've answered your question, Maria. I don't know if anybody, Maury maybe wants to add, add on to that. Well, for yeah. me, the name is, is important. I mean, you know, I, I can help me to connect. I, you know, for me, my guide, Lotus Blossom, you know, I said, okay, Lotus Blossom, what is the definition of that, right? So I looked it up and it it said uh, purity of body, mind, and soul. And I'm thinking, that's what I want. Okay, that, <laughs> that's what I'm going for. So, yeah, for me, I've always... It's always in our workings, in our teachings, it, it, we have always been uh, given the name and that's how they identify um, to us. Yeah. So. Yeah. And really, and really 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 is Sorry, go on, Chris. Yeah, it's really, um, really profound what's been said there, I feel, and very important in that, uh, that identifying clearly whether that be a guide in spiral loved one in spirit world that that name is important mm -hmm. I, I feel the same it is important um I, I just want to move on to the next question if that's all right and this one's from joanna cox who's joined us a few times we'd like to say hi to joanna and the question is sounds silly but how do we connect with our own spirit now, the first thing I don't want to say, Joanna, uh, Joanne, sorry, is there's no, the only silly question is the one you don't ask. Yeah. So there are no silly questions in this movement uh, in life at all. But I just want to add something that we were talking about in terms of, we talk about finding ourselves and finding our true purpose. And there are many ways you could do that, but I feel one of the big parts are starting to place the importance of your happiness and yourself higher than most of us do and it's something that it was discussing with Maureen and Stephen before we came online today about how if we've got a life decision to make or we're making a choice we put this huge consideration into how it's going to affect people around us more so sometimes than ourselves and our, we should keep that equal, if not more, is important uh, that our choices, we're making the right ones for us, that that's going to bring us that happiness, that truth, that we're not walking a path that somebody else wants us to walk, because that will not be a happy path for us. Um, and I feel not, um, we have to be our true authentic self, and finding that can be difficult sometimes, because uh, we make it um but also i've not fallen into the trap of being who people think we should be and i really feel if we start bowing to what people think we should do in life or they think we should be this certain person that what happens is we become this alternate version of ourselves that we're not happy with and it's sort of created for other people so we get away from our true self so I feel a big part in connecting with your own spirit is recognizing self-love, self-respect, how powerful you are as an individual and what you can truly manifest in your life if you begin to understand that. Um, and I'm going to pass now to, um, uh, to Maureen, just what your thoughts are on that question that Joanne's asked. So I can only say it as my own experience of how I connect. And, you know, we all have this duality of heart and mind, right? Heart is, for me, is the doorway to the soul. That yeah. is what's happening in my heart. What do I feel about things? What do I truly desire? And for me, that is where the direction of my spirit, of my soul is. And, you, you know, as we learn to kind of quiet the mind, it then has this ability to surrender to the guidance of the soul, the guidance of the heart, and then serve in that way, um, rather than trying egoically to lead things. And, well, you know, other people are saying I should do this or, yeah. mainstream life says it needs to look like this um you know if you if you take any creative person uh their art that's an expression of soul right and totally. the uniqueness right so i say connect with your heart what's it what's it uh 
making its guidance for you and and uh, just do your best to help your mind align to it. I remember when this was sort of a more of a struggle for me, what was happening in my mind was it didn't trust. But can I trust what you are making a suggestion to, right? Can I trust yeah. you? Because through our yeah. life experience, you know, things happen to us and, and we become protective and defensive. So the first response of the mind is defense. And that's just yeah. how it's designed. Absolutely. Uh, so it wants to know, can I trust you? Can I count on you, right? So that was sort of the experience that I had to move through in kind of harmonizing the duality so there's less duality with uh between mind and and soul or heart whichever so i could only share my experience of it oh, lovely i like Steven. to make a couple of things there yeah i, I remember a, a spirit i can't remember who it was but somebody i've got it in a transcript with some of our spirit teachers and and he or she said when the heart speaks listen and unfortunately, when we don't listen to the heart, we fear creeps in, we get angry, we, we blame, we blame other people, we don't look within, we shut ourselves off and we stop that connection, we stop that, that divine flow of light flowing in and out through our hearts. Mm. And, but just a bit of advisement for, for Joanne is, you know, don't be too hard on yourself we're all on a journey you know we're all we judge ourselves so harshly unfortunately i do we all do and just be gentle with yourself be nurturing with yourself but i just want to if you've got a bit of time on your hands joanne i, I want to give you a bit of homework <laughs> i don't I don't, i've never done it <laughs> or anybody can do this ask yourself these questions what am i who am I and what is my purpose? And I think when you can answer those questions, you'll never question yourself again. You, you connect with your true spirit. So what am I, who am I, and what is my purpose? So when I say who am I, just say, who is Joanne? Who is Maureen? Who is Stephen? And can you ask, can you, can you answer that? Can you answer those questions? So just think about that, John. So I want you just to think about it. So should we have a look at the next question? Yes, our next question comes from Darren Hatton. So thank you for joining us, Darren. And the question is, during meditation, I had a spiritual encounter. When I asked for the spirit's name, uh, I seemed to scare it off with my reaction. Or did he not want me to come? Did he not want to come through to me? So the question again, during a meditation, he had an encounter when I asked for the spirit's name, I scared it off with my reaction or did he not want to come through to me? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so who, who would like to answer that first? Would no, I, no, I, was, I think <laughs> even does. <laughs> yeah, but, the only thing that's coming to me about that is the meditator got all up in their head and lost the connection. So uh, yeah, that's what's only coming to me here, right? So, but off to Stephen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, because it's your experience, Darren, it's very hard to, when you ask us these questions, when everybody, we are only form, we have formulated our opinion. So we're making, in a way, our own judgment of, of yeah. what you're saying. So there, there could be different interpretations to your experience. So don't, whatever we give off in our, in our opinion, don't, don't take it as gospel but question and and that's a big advice me i want to say as well if you're on a spiritual journey never stop trusting but always trust with caution never stop trusting but trust with caution so everything's about energy so this spirit is sometimes I, what i sense actually what i'm picking up here spiritually is that sometimes when we have this feeling of unworthiness and we see wow you know, we just saw this beautiful Native American Indian. You think there's no way he wants to work with me. And at that spit second, we create a block. We because there's a fear there. And then that's and not the fact that the spirit of have, have you shooed that spirit away, you've created a door. 
that has shut that spirit away. The, the spirit is always there. It's that you've created that block. So really another powerful word, which you'll remember it in terms of connection, is trust. Have trust. You know, and that's really important. And, and trust is not always given or, or created. And I think trust starts within us in our, our own heart. Because when we have mistrust, that comes from fear. That comes from fear. And just have trust in yourself and the, and the guy. But then another take, I'm going to be, I'm going to put um, a spanner in the works here. You, um, it might be sometimes we work with um what we call rescue work or or there is there is mischievous spirits there, there can be uh, lower spirits that sometimes um can draw close to us and and they'll say oh hi i'm here to work with you but they want to be a bit um a bit mischievous with you and and i think that the minute you question who that spirit was they were like oh and, and, and remember that happened for a reason because that's teaching you something. So again, I was speaking to Maureen about it earlier on that every situation, everything that happens to us is, is a lesson, is a lesson for our spirit to learn. And spirit guides, inspires, will allow these things to happen to us. It's how we learn. We've got to learn these things as part of our part of our revolution, part of our growth. So so up to Chris, what do you, what do you think? Uh, concerning that uh, question, I think you made a very good point there that we're, uh, all we can do within ourselves when these questions are asked to speak our truths and our experience, but please take what you can and, and trust your feelings, Darren. That's what I would say above all. Always trust your feelings because these can be fooled. These can be fooled, but your feelings cannot be. Uh, if something feels right, it most probably is. If something feels not right, then it probably isn't. It's very simple. And uh, like what Maureen touched on is the mind. It's the mind that complicates things. It's the mind that takes things into this puzzle, puzzle and confuses things when things are very simple. So uh, we wish you well with that. And we Don't trust the mind. Trust the heart. The heart. Yeah. Listen to that, not that. <laughs> Now, well, we're on that subject. I'm going to move on to our next question that, uh, from Angela Potts. And the question is, how do you quieten the mind? Might sound a bit strange, this question. Uh, but I want to start with Maureen with this. How would you say, is, uh, could you quiet your mind? For me, quietening the mind, I use uh, a lot of tools through the yogic teachings. So breath is a really beautiful way to quiet the mind and bring the mind upon the breath, allowing the mind to watch and move with the flow of the breath. So you take a big inhale down into your belly, allow it to fill up into the rib cage, then up into the chest, and then let that whole breath come up into um, the third eye area. And then again, watch it exhale down you can't you're not thinking the mind is put upon something um and two within our yogic the yogic teachings there's uh we can use mantra so mantra sound vibration very powerful right so that allow it clears the uh left and right brain from it that it's job is to ping pong back and forth should i shouldn't i what about this what about this but when we can put our mind upon something there's something uh, called the meditative mind or the neutral mind where it comes becomes still and it's when we're in the meditative mind that we can more easily hear the whispers of the soul come up. So, yeah, using um, mantra meditation is really powerful in the way that you don't have to quiet and not any thoughts because the mind is made to think. That's its design. Um, but it's when when we're not doing meditation, uh, we're not emptying the garbage, the subconscious thoughts, the patterning that's always <laughs> there. So when we do meditation daily, it's like taking out the garbage every day. So there's less thoughts there. And with, with using mantra, sound has a current, it, its own current and its vibration. So when you are 
satnam, satnam, or whatever that you're using, you know, they, there's many um, mantras that can be available. Because of its high vibration, it clears things in uh, in the mind and then it settles it. So there's many, like, you know, with the, the uh, divine love meditation, I, I love to do heart breath with that at the beginning because you know you take this breath in but then as you exhale you exhale out your heart center so that helps to really open the center of the heart and then you have this beautiful feeling in there and then asking from that state so yeah watching the mind breathing using some meditation with mantra helps me to uh calm and discipline my mind yeah i feel there was some very good points made there with the, the breath techniques that we found very powerful and uh, mantras very very powerful um also i find there's a lot of really good um guided meditations as well mm -hmm. that can just if you have that focus then it might just take uh, take you away from those thoughts of the mind um uh, an advisement i would give uh, that uh, i've always spoke about in meditation or sitting in the silence is if a thought comes to you don't give too much energy on pushing that thought out because you'd be distracted even more just let it run its course um and uh, just one other technique i'd want to mention there that's very good during meditation is this a lovely simple one is to light a candle in your meditation and if you find yourself um the thoughts of the mind coming in or shopping or whatever's going on around come back and look at the candle mm -hmm. and then go back close your eyes into the meditation and if you lose concentration come back look at the candle do that as many times as you need to and it will help quieten the mind it's a lovely technique that that we've been part of for years mm -hmm. so uh Stephen, would you like to add anything yeah, and not much yeah. more really. I mean, what uh, what Maureen was saying, I, I totally agree. I, I call it breath work uh, for me is a stepping stone to meditation that helps with concentration. And, and what's really important to mention to everybody, it is virtually impossible. You cannot control the mind. The more, or you cannot think, you cannot not think because by not thinking, you're thinking. So meditation actually is not about controlling the mind. The meditation is about is about being the observer, about observing the mind without actually being in the mind. It's about lifting above the cloud. And and one thing I want to mention as well is that what I call practice. A lot of people say, "Well, I've meditated and I can't I can't meditate." And they get so frustrated. I said, "Well, how many times have you meditated? Well, I've meditated once this week." And and really, it, it's 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 a called a practice meditation that so should be practiced every day. And you've got to maintain that practice, and you've got to discipline yourself. But the more you discipline yourself in meditation, the the, the stronger the link will be, the stronger the desire. What Maureen would say, the stronger the desire will be because you're connecting, and and taking out. I love the way you you, you sort of describe that taking out the garbage, and, and it is. It, it's like getting the Hoover out on a daily basis to clear out uh, <laughs> and you know i feel now when i don't meditate i feel grouchy i feel agitated and when i do i just feel my daily life i don't react to things i feel gentler so it's a practice nothing to do with religion meditation meditation is probably one of the most powerful natural forms practice done by any human being on this planet it everybody should do it it's absolutely amazing mantras sound i call them keys they're all that I've, I've done a lot of teaching on breath work we've done a lot of videos over over the course i've moved through the kaihana and it's like with breath work not every breath technique's right for everybody and it's just finding the right breath work that's right for you uh, you know i like the deep abdominal breathing i like the, the the count breath work i struggle with sometimes but i know that the good for me and the more you practice the better it is so don't set your intention to say i want to control the mind because you, you will always fail it's not about controlling the mind and when thoughts come to you 
don't try to suppress them because they're coming with a vengeance. Let them come in and let them come out like water. Let them just flow. Just let them flow. So that's just my personal experience. So, yeah. well, and I think yeah. it, can, can I just add this? I, I think it's important. I think our thoughts can be really helpful in letting us know where we are. Yeah. If our, you know, if our thoughts are sort of feeling down um, or on a lower vibration and, and really um, increasing maybe our sadness or our feelings of loneliness, we can take that and, you know, offer up a beautiful, even a prayer of like, help me. There's there's so much help <laughs> from spirit around us, right? And they can also help to bring their presence around us Absolutely. and influence and help to lift us up, right? So our thoughts are are kind of like a guiding post of just maybe where we are on in our mental thinking as well. So they they're serving us in in ways if we let them. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to go. It'd be our final question because I'm, I honestly don't know where the time's gone. It's gone so fast this yeah. evening, which is always a good sign. Let's do the uh, two hours. Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on our bathroom limit. Um, so the last one comes from Marie Marsden once again. Uh, and her question is, it's a little bit of a statement and a question. And it says, I feel so disconnected from my connections with spirit. I get agitated when I try to sit. What can you suggest for me to get back involved with spirit, please? I'm just going to open this up to Stephen or Maureen, whichever of you feel impressed to give you words first. Maureen, do you want to go first? Okay, so in my experience, when I feel the disconnect, I feel that sometimes there, for me, there is, I'm on the cusp of a transformation. I'm on the cusp of having something cleared because there's a lot of turmoil within me. And so I know that the activation of uh, receiving divine love is something that will weed out the, the negativity, those conditions that are there. So I can often have a difficult time connecting with spirit and or in my meditation, connecting with myself at that point in time. So perhaps there is something that is ready to be lifted off and shifted within you. Um, that's what is coming to me to share. And so rather yeah, I understand it's difficult. So maybe you just do little spurts, but also then bring yourself throughout your day as you're going about your tasks, just upon your spirit, upon bring meditation into your life in in your lifestyle and allow that um, whatever it is potentially that's ready to be lifted um, and cleared and harmonized uh, to to go. So that's what I would, that would be my response from my experience of it. That's lovely that Maureen. It's really lovely, thank you. Uh, Stephen? Yeah, I think, I think I want to say to everybody as well is that don't feel disheartened or feel sad when when these things happen because I, I i call it an opportunity when these we you know when you feel that you're disconnected with spirit we're well, not really disconnected it, it very much what more in saying you transforming there's an opportunity for growth and evolution shedding things that no longer serve your consciousness as your consciousness is growing you have to you got to sh let go of the things that's causing you to suffer um that is hindering your progress emotionally physically energetically vibrationally whatever you want to call it and again a little bit of what i was talking about earlier on is that we create barriers that the stops us in our heart in your root chakra in, in your meridians in your emotional body whatever you want to call it and I like the way that Maureen said that, and, it's, and I can relate to it really. What we what we've been learning about pain and trauma, and I think a, a lot of things are superficial. We we you know we would buy crystals, we'll buy herbal tea, and and to help us to heal us physically, or we do meditations, which is another form of healing, another form of healing, and it helps us 
sort of connect to harmonize or connect with a higher self but a lot of these are, are, are sort of superficial and i think there needs to be what we call deep cleansing healing where we've got to rip out i sound very dramatic by saying this but ripping out the roots of our pain and trauma it's like having a wound it's like having an open wound on your arm and, and, you, and you're always you put the plaster on and it sort of heals and then it weeps again and it's like something that's what i call poisoning poisoning your spirit and i'll just give you an example i used to so that people can relate to this a little bit more that i i used to get really angry really really quick I used to get really angry and, and and i sort of ignored that part of me my true spirit is not angry my true spirit is wonderful and beautiful so there's something within my heart center within my within my uh, energetic vibration or my emotional body a pain and trauma that's happened to me in my life that is stuck there and and that's grown that's that's hindered my heart center and you know i've ignored it i'm fine i'm fine and and i carry on living my, and that will grow as, as you don't deal with things and that's what we say in this work you've got to work on yourself mm -hmm got to work and heal yourself and learn to let go learn to surrender surrender to those healing energies because when when we're angry we're not we're not angry with the people around us we're angry with ourselves because mm -hmm. our, our, our spirit is only but a reflection we are reflecting the way we are is only a reflection of our own spirit of what's happening within us yeah. so we've got to seek seek teachers seek shaman seek healers that can hold space that can create sacred space so that you can go and really work on yourself on on a salary level you know real deep healing where you talk about a wound on your hand actually rip out the roots that's actually causing that wound from not healing it's like having an emotional root so so my advisement to anybody to it's not really to your question there marie is you've got to in your meditation is an opportunity for you to reflect and to really look at things that the answers that you're seeking you know the answer for so when you connect with your heart your heart will say that is the reason why you feel like you can't connect with spirit because your heart will tell you just because you're not listening so if you sit in stillness or just close your eyes and you say to your mind, have a couple of goes at this, Marie, and say, I'm speaking to my heart here. What is causing my agitation? And I bet you, you and if you surrender and accept, your heart will tell you. Your heart will tell you what you need to do to heal. When we sleep, when we sleep, when we don't interfere, when the mind's not there, the body heals itself because we're out on the astral we're doing our own work so there's again the mind the mind complicates the healing process and it stops the self-healing process because the healing is so natural so wonderful so beautiful mm -hmm. it's just that we complicate things we we create these illusionary fears and these goblins and these gremlins within our emotional body sorry i'm going on the pedestal <laughs> can can i add to what you're saying there Stephen? because yeah. I, I really relate to that and um you know just what i want to say is in this um meditation that we do in the, the with our circles of light of really invoking this divine essence yeah. what it does is it gives strength to that voice of the soul it really awakens it because this essence helps to clean out the disharmonies those conditions the wounding so as this this the heart the soul gains its strength it has that ability to provide its voice so when you know maybe in the beginning when we're doing this um we might sort of hear you know this little trickle of it but there will come a time i can promise you that by going through this and and having this essence being invoked in the soul and working upon it it's a true real vibrating <laughs> active energy 
that the voice of your soul, it's just, it's undeniable. It has its own uh, deep, rich, true uh, wisdom that it will express to you. So you, you expand. So you become more soulfully living rather than mindfully uh, yes. living. Mm. You live yeah, in your true purpose. You live in your authentic yeah. self. You, you, you are living and breathing the light without the distortions. And no matter what anybody does to you, you're standing yeah. strong in your light, in your truth. And all alongside, like as we're all saying, you know, these things are strengthening in us, but there's still more to heal, right? So like we're not saying that we've we've got it. We each have oh, our there's more all the time. Right? There's always more. You think, yeah. oh, okay, wow, here I am. Here's my new baseline. And then it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, okay, wow, here's something else, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's it's always ongoing. But as, as this culmination and, you know, this work begins to happen, this just you no know, turning back, right? It's, um, yeah. You, Absolutely. Yeah. Once you get on the path of enlightenment and, and I think just uh, anybody who finds herself in a situation like Marie mentioned, uh, um, just know that there are many crossroads that come on the pathway. Mm -hmm. and, and you will get agitated, you will get frustrated with yourself. You want to give up, quit. Uh, I'm, I'm never doing this again. I'm going to run away. But you won't. You'll be back to it the day after. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's all part of it. And I feel so many times when we feel these emotions that we feel, oh, I, I'm going backwards or I'm going downhill and actually you're not. And I can tell everybody when you feel that way, you are moving forward. And the reason you will see that because it's not easy mm -hmm. because you're facing your challenges, you're challenging yourself, you're moving forward and it is not, it is not always easy. It's that's why they call it work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it is worth it at the end and what you're going to feel after you've overcome a particular obstacle is total bliss and love. Yeah. So I think that's where we're just going to draw this evening to a close. And uh, I, I just think it's been a wonderful evening what's been shared. I'd like to thank everyone who's joined us online. I'd like to thank Maureen once again for sharing her beautiful words with us, her truths and her inspiration. Is just there is anything you'd like to leave us with, Maureen, before... We finish well, up. I just thank you for the invitation and joining you two together. And I look forward to our continued time. And thank you for being able to be open to share a workshop in the future. And also the inspiration of uh, me interviewing you at the Purple Mountain. Oh, yeah. And, we will reverse uh, the roles very yeah. soon. <laughs> so behind the scenes of the Purple Mountain, the nitty gritty. Oh, I'm not sure they're ready for it, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> so please, all those watching, get your questions ready. For <laughs> what's happening? Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, so thank you both very much. Always a pleasure to be oh, with you. Thank you. And, and, uh, and we will be posting the link that Maureen spoke about it. There's, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure uh, we're able to leave that link and uh, anybody who's uh, feeling a bit um, isolated, it's a wonderful, if, you, if you're able to be comfortable with the technology, I would highly recommend it as a wonderful way to connect with people around the world. And so many of us are feeling at this time, we can't hug, we can't touch, we can't shake hands, but you can feel that connection right here in your heart. And I could say when we sat, you can feel it. So it, it's a tremendous uplifting experience to be part of as well. Um, so I'm just going to ask if Stephen wants to leave us with anything before we finish up. Not really. I mean, as we, we've said a lot, a lot, a lot tonight. I just want to, I just want everybody. What actually, something just come to my mind. Actually, I want everybody to know that no one is alone. No one is alone in their journey, and and just tying tying in about guides and loved ones, your loved ones are by your side now and you are never alone. Please remember that. You know, you might feel it, you might sense it, but you are not alone. Whatever you are going through, we've all gone through and are going through together. We're Absolutely. all working together. There's, there's only, there's not many races, there's only one race and that is the human race. 
there, there should only be there is only one world and that's mother earth so we're all in it together so you're not alone nobody's ever alone we're all in it together we're all loving and anyway so thank you very much okay so i just want to once again thank maureen uh, for giving her time and sharing uh, everything she's done with us this evening we'll look forward to that continuing connection and to stephen of course and we'd just like to say for everybody walk in your truth walk in your light and most importantly always walk in peace good night everyone good night